Some of you may know that alongside going to the gym, I do have a life. That life being a videographer, that is my full-time role. So I have my own business where I will go around and film people's stuff. That's literally it, to be honest. That's how I briefly sum it up to people when they ask what I do. So I have come up with a brilliant idea. Instead of doing gym content, which I can no longer be bothered with, evident by the fact that I haven't posted in ridiculous amount of time. We're gonna do it about camera equipment and like lighting and stuff. This video is not about lighting, but it's just an example. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't know why I said it like that. I also like couldn't be bothered to wait to set up this light before filming, which is why I've just started now. You'll soon come to learn that setting up equipment is the majority of the time that it takes as a videographer. The rest is a breeze. That's a lie. Yay! Okay, so what are we actually gonna be doing in this video? I've decided to kind of do this spontaneously. So it's gonna be off the top of my head, 10 videography tips, mostly aimed towards beginners, to be honest with you. And instead of teasing you straight away, we're gonna go in right now with tip number one. I have here in front of me a nice organized little tray. You want multiple SD cards. I mean, saying it sounds obvious, but if you have one SD card, you're an idiot. Depending on what camera you buy, kind of depends on the SD card. So unless you buy a pretty expensive camera, you're likely just gonna be fine with one of these sort of normal basic SD cards. I mean, 20 pound each. I recommend at least like three. You never know when a random SD card is just gonna break on you. So if it breaks, you've got a spare, you just bang that in your camera, you can continue with the shoot, no bother. Apart from if, you know, that one SD card that you had in the camera had all your footage on and you want to die after that, then you've got a bit more of an issue. But either way, if it doesn't implode and you still have all the footage on it, it just doesn't write to it anymore. You have two cards then. So I would recommend at least two, three ideally. It's also handy because say you're gonna be the editor of a shoot and there's another camera operator on that shoot. You just give them one of your SD cards, then nobody has to do any file transferring. You've got all the footage straight away. It's just so much better. If you do buy a relatively expensive camera, you might need to upgrade your SD cards to be more like a V60 or a V90. V90, V60, V30 are all just different types of cards. If you're new to videography, you probably don't really need to go super in depth with it. Basically, it's just the amount of data that can get written to an SD card at once. So if you're shooting in higher quality settings, you're gonna be using more data to write to an SD card. However, they're a bit more expensive. I think this card was something like 80 or 90 pounds, which welcome to filmmaking, everything's expensive. Bonus tip for the SD cards, you see that? Red little dot, that is essential if you're shooting with other people because say you're on a shoot with five different camera ops and you're all throwing your SD cards at the editor because you've got on-site edits to do, it can be a bit chaotic. And then at the end of the day, you know, people are gonna have the same types of SD cards. You're not gonna know which one's yours, but because you put a red little sticker or, you know, you can even get really fancy and print off like your logo onto some stickers. But because you've done that on the back, you know exactly which cards are yours. You're never losing them again. You're welcome. Number two, lighting is way more important than the camera you're shooting on. I have got nearly a 3,000 pound setup right now and it looks awful because there's no lighting. All you have to do is think about your lighting a tiny bit and you can make your shot look way more dynamic and cool. I would maybe do a bit more of a feel like this side. This isn't about lighting, but either way, instead of spending three grand to upgrade your camera, I would recommend spending like a thousand on some new lights. This, oh my God, I almost just dropped the battery. The light that I have here is this. This basically with a softbox on it, it is a 200 XS. I'm gonna turn my big light, the main lights on as well. I'm lucky enough that the lighting in my flat actually isn't that bad. This is a T Amaran 200 XS light. It's super powerful, quite compact, quite small. It's just gonna improve the quality of your videos so much. And I think it's only about 300 pounds. Yes, 300 pounds is a lot of money, but please, buy some lights because otherwise your videos are gonna look awful no matter how much money you spend on a camera. Tip number three, I'm actually sorry to say this, but gear does matter. If you're gonna start making money from this profession, gear matters. There's no way around that. Because if gear doesn't matter, you could just turn up to a shoot with an iPhone, start doing this, and your client's gonna pay you. I can't think of a world where that's gonna happen. If you turn up to a shoot with an iPhone, your client's gonna be like, that's a joke, we're not paying you. Even if you make your iPhone footage look good, your client's not gonna take you seriously. That's just how it is. So yes, if we're talking strictly quality, you could probably make an iPhone video look very good if you know what you're doing. But if we're talking real world use, if you turn up to a shoot and go like this, your client is gonna be like, you're not getting paid, bro, sorry about that. Number four, this definitely applies to the business side of things, but also the camera. Please keep your stuff organized and tidy. If you open your camera bag and it's a mess and you've just thrown everything in there from the last shoot and it's just chaos, you're gonna lose things you're gonna fuck things up on the shoot. It's not gonna be fun. I've done this with one shoot where I didn't organize my camera bag the day before because I was just like, oh yeah, I've done this a million times. I've done on so many shoots before. My camera bag's all just set and ready to go. I don't need to look at it the day before. I can just go on my shoot and I'll be cool. 
Wrong. I got there the next day and I was missing the little screws that I needed for my gimbal. So I couldn't use my gimbal for the entire shoot. Ideal. So it's little things like that, just being organized, having the screws in a specific place, having your SD cards in a specific spot. That type of thing is super essential. So slightly more on organization, hard drives. I literally have about a million. Keep your footage nice and organized. If it gets messy in all of your folders, then you're just an idiot and you're just going to cause yourself more pain later down the line when you're like, oh, where was this footage for this shoot for the... Oh, I don't know. I should have maybe named my folders properly. And then more towards the business side, keep all of your shoots and your information about shoots nice and organized. I personally use a bullet journal method. I've done a whole video about that. I'll link in the description. And this doesn't just keep just my shoots organized. This keeps basically my whole life organized in a nice, simple analog format. But you can use anything. You can use some online app like Notion or whatever it is. Just make sure everything that you have to do with the shoot is nice and organized so you know exactly what is going on with it. Next is know the shoot. Now this sounds a bit weird. Obviously you should know your shoot, but what I've done occasionally is sort of overpack for a shoot and overcomplicate something that really doesn't need to be that complicated. Let's say for example, you're shooting for an influencer who is gonna post a video on YouTube. The odd five second clip that they have recorded on their iPhone for that video is like amazing and can help complete the story in the edit. So don't be shy of using things like your phone. Did say quality matters. It's true in some cases. That's why you need to know your shoot. I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes you can get the two who caught up in the quality that you actually just avoid filming the essential things. Don't do that. So knowing where videos are gonna be posted and knowing your shoot is so essential to the kit that you're gonna bring, but also how you're gonna film it. Next, quick one, because I'm not gonna go into detail, but no etiquette on a film set. If you don't have film set, I say film set, any shoot set, any shoot scenario, if you don't have good etiquette on site, you know, wearing black clothes, etc., then, you've done a bad job before you've even turned up. It's little things like how you would hand a lens to somebody else that a lot of people overlook because for example, handing a lens to someone, there's a proper way you do it where you say, got it. If they don't say got it, I'm not letting go of the lens. It's just that simple. Even though I'm only dealing with, you know, a lens that's worth a thousand pounds, especially if it's not my lens, I don't really want to drop that. And don't get me wrong, it's more essential for like higher quality shoots. If you're on a film set and you're holding a 20 or 30 thousand pounds lens, you're going to make sure that that other person's got it before you're letting go. But it still kind of applies on the lower end shoots. So no matter where you are on your filming journey, there's basic etiquette that I feel like you should just know or at least be aware of on shoots. Kind of goes back to the point before about know your shoot. If you're going on a shoot that's super casual, that like really doesn't matter what you wear. For example, say you're doing an influencer's YouTube video. You could just turn up wearing shorts and no one's going to care because it's not, it's not that deep. But if you're going on a super professional shoot where you're going to be around, you know, uh, rich people, for example, or, you know, you need to be in a suit or, you know, there's different elements to what should go into your outfit or what should go into how you present yourself for that shoot. It's just something you need to be aware of. I think that made sense. Next tip, I would rather you underexpose your footage by a little bit than overexpose your footage. Let me give you a literal visual example. I have now quite literally overexposed my footage. This would be unrecoverable in post, obviously. Look at it. Oh God, it's making me kind of cringe. However, let me severely underexpose my footage by quite a lot. So now obviously this is quite underexposed, but this is way more usable than the footage is before. This is a very extreme example, by the way, but it still applies to the sort of micro level of it. Very brief overview, but just underexposed rather than overexposed, thanks. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it in this video. I might do a whole nother video on how to clean your stuff, but either way, this is a little blowy thing. Get a little cleaning kit, 20 pound from Amazon, because if you have a massive bit of dust on your camera sensor or in your lens, it's gonna ruin your footage. You don't want that. Next tip, this one's about making money. Yeah, by not making money. <laughs> when you want to get more paid work, or especially when you're starting out, to shoot for free. Now there's a limit with this. I would say do like five or six free videos and then call it a day. Any more people asking for free stuff to sort of tell them no, now I'm charging for videos. But that is how you will get your first paid clients, guaranteed. How it works, you do a video for free, you don't ask for payment, you don't ask for anything like that, you just show, I'll do this for free for you for a favor. I recommend doing this when you've bought a brand new camera, by the way. If you buy a brand new camera, you need to learn how to use it. Best way to learn how to use it is by going out into the field and actually shooting with it. So why not offer somebody something for free? You get to learn how to use your camera, you get stuff for your reel, and they get a nice little video. You know, do it for a small business owner. A personal trainer is what I sort of did it for. That's how I started out. Personal trainers, did a video for them in a pure gym, and then all the other personal trainers in that gym saw the video. They then started asking me, oh, how much do you charge for a video? Off of doing one free video, I had maybe three or four personal trainers ask me, how much do you charge? Straight away, you shouldn't be like, oh, I charge a thousand pounds for a video because obviously personal trainers can't afford that. So I was saying to them, you know, 50 pound here, 
100 pound here. And over time, then you slowly build up your prices. But I would have never got those first paid gigs if I didn't do the very first one for free. Also be smart with who you're doing free videos for because you know, at the end of the day, still taking up your time and still taking up your skills. So you don't just wanna give loads of free videos out to people that it's not gonna benefit or to people that it won't even benefit you. Because at the end of the day, your goal with giving out free videos is to get people interested in your stuff. So if you do it to somebody who's not going to talk about your videos, who isn't going to share the video around, it might not be worth giving them a free video. Maybe you make a video for a barbershop and you do it for free. That's probably quite a common free video one. That barbershop isn't going to have much reach in terms of like what other businesses is that video going to be exposed to? Probably not many. It might work and it probably would work, but this is why I think for me doing a personal trainer video was like the smartest thing I could have done because there's, you know, 10 other personal trainers in that same gym who are all connected with this one person that's 10 other small businesses that have exposure to the content that I just made. So basically, if you wanna get paid and you're not getting paid yet, do free videos. Next, audio quality is so damn important. You've gotta think, audio is 50% of your video. When people are watching a video, they will tend to put up with watching a bad video if the audio quality is good. The visuals could be the most beautiful thing you have ever seen in your entire life, and if the audio sounds like shit, they won't watch it. It seems like a bit of a weird thing to invest in audio equipment. It's like, why is that thing so expensive? It's just capturing sound, but trust me, it's worth it. Next tip, if you wanna become a videographer, learn to like coffee because it's just a thing. You just have to like coffee or you're not a videographer. Oh, so good. This next tip is a bit boring, but it's just true. You need to be practicing and learning new things all of the time, especially if you're new to the game. I'll be real with you. There is so many more people that are better than you at videography. It's just facts. So if you want a chance to be, you know, at that level and start making money from it, then you've got to learn quite a bit. I'm still learning stuff over half a decade into my career in videography, so you should definitely be learning like every single fucking day. I'm still learning stuff over half a decade now into my videography career, so you should definitely be picking up on new things like as much as you can. Next tip is stop shooting in auto. If you pick up your camera, shoot in automatic and charge people money for that, I'm unhappy with you. Learn the exposure try. <laughs> I nearly did a fucking little <laughs> TikTok dance. Okay. Learn how to expose your footage in manual because you A, have more control over the footage so you can actually make it look the way that you want and it's gonna be better overall. And two, auto will just mess up your footage. It just, it'll change your shutter speed when you don't want it changed. It'll change your ISO when it shouldn't be changed. It's just not what you want. Next, more of a business side of things one, learn how much you should be charging for each client. Every client is different and it kind of comes into what I said before. If you're doing a personal trainer, for example, a solo business owner, they're not gonna have all the money in the world to spend thousands and thousands on videos. So that's one end of the spectrum. If you've got a solo business owner who maybe doesn't make a super large amount of money and doesn't have a lot of budget to spend. Don't get me wrong, you can still make videos for them and if they're effective and it will make them more money, they'll keep coming back to you. But then you've got the other end of the spectrum where you're gonna be dealing with big businesses. Realistically, those big businesses have got a middleman who just works for them in the marketing team or whatever it is and they're just trying to reach your budget. Their budget for a campaign might be say 10,000 pounds. And for a videographer, they might say, okay, our budget's 2,000 pounds. They've got that number in mind before they even reach out to you. And your job, if you wanna make as much money as possible, is to get as close to that budget as possible without taking the piss. Because at the end of the day, these big businesses, if they've just got a number that they need to be below, you could be as close to that number as possible and they'd still say yes. So a lot of the time, a videographer will ask, what's the budget? But I don't personally really do that. Now, like I say, there is a level where you're gonna be taking the piss. If you turn around to a company, and even if they're massive and say, oh yeah, I, 5,000 pounds a day when you're pretty new to the game, less than a year of experience, they're probably gonna say no, unless you get super lucky or something, I don't know. So with that being said, don't be shy to charge a lot of money, just don't take the piss. Next tip is gonna be get into videography as young as you can. Reason being is the younger you are, the more risk you can take. And I would say for the first year, you're not gonna be able to make a super massive amount in videography. So let's say, for example, you're in your mid thirties. You're probably gonna have bills, let's say a mortgage. You might even have a wife. You might even have kids that you've got to pay for. Basically, a bunch of stuff that kind of ties you down. You've got loads of bills to pay. You need to make X amount each month to literally, you know, survive. And if you suddenly wanna get into videography and you've got no equipment, 
it's going to be a bit of a hassle because you're going to have to shell out, I don't know, £5,000 on a decent bit of kit. But then you're also going to have to spend months and months trying to actually get new clients. And then once you've got a new client, you've got to spend time retaining that client. But just growing the business in general can take up to two, three years before you actually start to make a decent wage that's consistent. I would say for me anyway, it took about three to four years to make a really decent, consistent wage that I'm now making and it's, you know, sustainable. So if you can do that when you're younger, it's going to be way better for you because you can actually tolerate that risk of taking, you know, three years out. It's not the end of the world then if you have to start a full-time job if the videography thing doesn't work out. Also in the future, I'm going to be starting mentoring for videography. So if you're interested in that, show your interest early because I might even be giving out discounts. But also in the background, I'm working on a videography course that is going to teach you all of the basics with videography in a decently priced package. So keep your eyes out for those because I'll be working on them in the background. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't know how many I've actually done. So that may have just been like a random amount of tips. But either way, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you like the style of it and you like the more videography sort of talk, then subscribe because I'm definitely going to be doing more of this type of video. Drop your comments on suggestions for videos you want to see as well. And I might even do 